This is a quick configuration video for the MLG2 web checker. Um, you're seeing the main SOPA screen here for this device. I have a 445 millimeter long um, web checker. And the first thing you'll notice is a sensor setup. So think of this as an alignment tool, uh, alignment aid. And you want all four of these bars as far into the green or as close to 100% as possible. They don't have to be 100%. But the closer, the better. So um, that's the basic sensor alignment. So I click next, and now you're going to do a sensor teach in. So what you're seeing on this screen is it's showing you if you do have there. There's on occasion where um, in these applications, when the when the web checker is mounted, the product will already be in the field, and there's no way to remove it. So what this is saying is during this sensor teach in, you need to move that. Uh, product back and forth because at some point each beam needs to be uh, clear of anything blocking it. So that's all they're saying. That's all they're showing here. So I click start. I have nothing in the field. So I can just immediately click stop and it does a sensor teach in. Um, teach in was good. And then now I, I can do a material teach in. Most of the time you don't have to do this, but sometimes if the, if the uh, product that you're trying to monitor is semi-transparent it might be a good idea to do a sensor teaching or a material teaching um, just to just to make sure we're good but for this demo purposes I won't do that um, you will notice here however that during the material teaching you want that material to be a third of the way away from the receiver um, so in other words when you're running this the board can't just be anywhere in this field it needs to be as close to a third of the distance away from the sender receiver. It needs to be a third of, of that distance away from the receiver about. It doesn't have to be exactly, but as close as you can get, it, that's going to increase your accuracy. Um, so that's what they're showing here, and that's what I'll show you um, when I get into this. So click next. Uh, what you're seeing here is that um, th there's nothing in the field, so it just says um, edge 1 and edge 10 are good. If I had one thing in the field, if I had, if I just stuck my phone into, into the field, and you'll see this again here in a minute, um, edge one and edge 10 would show up. If I had two things in the field, then it's tracking four edges at that point, and then um, I believe it'd be two and nine would show up. So that that's how this operates. Um, basically, it can monitor up to 10 edges. So again, if there's one thing in the field, it just says the first edge is, is edge one, the last edge is edge 10. So go ahead and click finish. Um, you can do some basic things in the general device settings, but I'll go to the enhanced sensing tab. So here's, here's what I want to do. Uh, we already did the sensor alignment. You can do some blanking if you wanted to blank out some areas. Uh, there's a basic sensor teaching, with, which we've already done, material teaching, we've already done. Now I'm going to go to configuration functions. I want to wait. I want to make function one um, output the width measurement of whatever's in the field. And I'm going to say I want that width measurement to be position of edge one to position of edge 10, like we like we discussed. And then function two is going to be the center measurement. You probably don't need that for what you're doing but that is another uh, function that you can have on here. And then I go to analog outputs and say QA1, I want the result of function one, which is the width. QA2, result of function two, which is the center point. And then I'm just gonna use my phone uh, to show you. I'm about, a third, I'm about a third of a way away from the receiver. And you can see anywhere in this field, the QA1 is the analog for my width, and that's not changing. QA2 is changing because that's tracking the center point. If I change the width, QA1 changed, and QA2 is still tracking that center point. So that's basically all there is to the web checker. Um, if you need, we do have a light grid that's the MLG2 Pro instead of the MLG2 web checker. Uh, the Pro has a lot more different uh, functions in it, some different functionality that you can do much more advanced. The web checker is just kind of uh, basically a special device specifically made for this type of application.